The recent announcement of a 70% windfall tax on forex gains has sent shockwaves through the market, triggering a sharp decline in banking stocks. Investors are grappling with concerns over reduced dividends, lower valuations and potential liquidity challenges for banks. This report delves into the impact of this new tax on the banking sector, examining the performance of major lenders and the broader market implications. Nabila Mohammed, Banking Sector Analyst, Chapel Hill, Denham, joins me for this. Thank you, Nabila, for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning to you too. I'm also joined by Mokhtar Mohammed, CEO Asher Investments Limited. Thank you, Mokhtar, for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Papacho. Right. Uh, let me begin with you. Um, Nabila, I'm not sure we've spoken about the windfall tax you know, since it was announced. So first, let me get your thoughts on it. Uh, do you have any reservations about it? So my thoughts, I would like to share my thoughts on it from two perspectives. Okay. Now, the first perspective I would like to look at it from is the angle of the fiscal authorities that the federal government. Now, the federal government's revenue streams are a bit constrained currently, and they have the need to they have already passed the supplementary budget of 6.2 trillion naira. Where are they going to get that money to fund it? A cheap way for them was just to, you know, come up with this windfall tax. Because number one, they are not going to want to go back into the debt market to try and that will further pressure their debt levels. And they are not also considering raising the um, tax rate beyond the level that is currently is that in terms of non-revenue stream for them. So this windfall tax is just like a quick win, you know, that will not have any impact, any negative impact on the debt levels. As we know, Q1 um, um, de uh, debt service to revenue was around 74% um, of the revenue that they made in Q1. So that alone, it's already a lot of pressure on the government given the high interest rate environment. That is from the aspect of the federal government. Now, from the aspect of the banks, my thought is that the timing with, uh, with this windfall tax is not really convenient given that these banks are actually out in the market to raise monies, to recapitalize given what they have been told or instructed by the CBN to do. So all, all these are really my thoughts around it. There is the aspect of course of the federal government where they are trying to get a quick win uh, in terms of funding for the budget and it is also the wrong timing you know, for the banks given that they are in the market to re recapitalize. Right, thank you, Nabila. Mokhtar, let me get your thoughts on this. Nabila said something. She said it's quick win for the federal government. But what is it for other people, really, that this particular um, tax will affect, especially the banking sector? Well, um, thank you again for having me. She said it is a quick way, and um, that means not thinking out of the box, just trying to do something, uh, just looking for money, whichever way, what a quick way, doesn't think about the damaging effect we have on the economy or the institution. I must say, when I got this, I think it's very draconian, it's very anti-business, um, it's even anti-tax in Nigerian law because you don't you don't uh, tell people to pay tax of what they've already uh, audited report where you have already submitted, they submitted to their shareholders, their shareholders have given a go-ahead, there's no tax in pension, they have paid 30% of the income tax on the profit. We must also know that uh, the same uh, government, through their institution, the regulators, the CBN, have asked the bank not to spend a dime of that money to pay investors or to even use for the operational purposes. And for them not to say they should pay um, um, tax on it, I mean, a new type of tax called win for tax is, um, is laughable. And the fact, again, when they took it to the National Assembly, the National Assembly, they, they, they said they wanted 50%, and the National Assembly has opted to 70%. So when you tax it, when you add the 30%, so you that the bank had totally given the government all they are going for. And the, for a policy that the government thinks have generated wealth for them, the government has forgotten in the other way. It has also resulted in the bank may have non-performing tax because some of the companies or that were are banking that the banks are giving loan are also fall behind in their payment schedules because of these FX uh, losses. They form. So the government is not thinking out of the box. They're just thinking of way to get money and they don't think um, the effect on the economy. So for me, I think is is um, yes, the part that it has been done in other countries, but when it's done in other countries, it is it's in the law not a, a second thought or means of getting money. It is there when you have a win for, it is there in the law, it's there in the tax law that you pay. 
Uh, but in this case, now you are, you, are, you, are, you are going after the bank. The bank are not the only institution that has gained from the windfall. The oil and gas sector also gained from the windfall. So why are you not going after them? Why are you going, just going after the bank? So I think uh, we need to, they need to take a second look at this. Uh, the bank is the, is the Nigerian golden um, um, sector. As far as I'm concerned, it's the only sector that gives uh, a, a Nigeria pride outside the shop. This country, they seem to be the one that are expanding. We don't want to even go to the details how this current policy by the CBA will affect their expansion that or I mean by, I mean by the federal government. What I want them to do is to sit down and be realistic in their demands to the bank and also um, look at the impact they, this will have in the economy in the larger term. All right, Mukta, you, you said something. You touched on the retroactive you know, aspect of this particular tax. And another thing is we have some analysts who are saying that in actual fact or in actual sense that there really isn't a windfall because at the end of the day, you are eroding the you know, foreign currency value of these assets. What do you make of that? I totally agree. And I like at the time the CBN said that the CUSA is not reliable. Re 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 um, the income is not eligible income, and those are incomes that also could be affected because at that time the exchange was about 1,700, and their realizable income, they are, they are exchange was about 1,700. Now we're doing 1,500, so that has already already created a vacuum that going forward, and that was the main reason why the CBS said they shouldn't touch that money because they don't see it like a money that was gained. Uh, it, it could also become a, a, a systematic risk. So for them, now the physical side to come back and say they want a tax on what uh, the CBN has said that the bank should not spend, I, I think it's better what people are saying. So I, I, I totally agree with them. Right, interesting. Now, Mila, let me come to you. You play in the financial market space. Actually, you analyze the financial market. Talk to us about what seems most concerning for bankers, really. Really, what is more the major concern for bankers is around the fact that these policies sort of look inconsistent. As Mutar rightly said, they first said um, when the dislocation happened in the currency market, that is the FX market, and you started to see these banks record gains, the CBN came up with a circular saying that you cannot use these gains to pay um, um, dividends. It shouldn't be for, it shouldn't be, you should pay dividends from your core earnings. The other mob came out to say that it should not be long. They came out again with this windfall tax uh, of 50%, and they were supposed to. It was supposed to be a tax that will be charged on their 2023 FX gains um, initially. But when it went to the National Assembly, they increased this 50% to 70%, and now said that this tax would apply from 2023 to 2025. So it means that at this point, we should anything can be announced, and it will just send shock waves into the market. So really, this is really what is bothering most of the bankers. The fact that there are policies back to back to back that are just, you know, sort of inconsistent and not really favoring them, giving the time, the time that they are right now, which is in the market to raise money. And it's also sending a negative signal as well to investors that are supposedly to invest in these banks as they come out to raise capital. You know, I'm just asking, so who's going to fight? Uh, let me not use the word fight. Who is going to speak for the banks at this point in time, seeing that the impact of this is alarming? So who will speak for the banks, really? Who's going to say, you know what, we think we are putting a lot of pressure on this bank, so let's, you know, let's douse it on all of those. Is there anyone? So definitely the banks would also speak for themselves, given that they have engagements with the CBN. And even the CBN as well should also, you know, come out to have meetings with the stakeholders concerned in order to see how this can be addressed. Because with the recent approval that we, the, the Senate passed in terms of this windfall tax, it is now beyond 2023 games. So if you even think about it critically, you'll be you'll be wondering why are they saying as far as 2025? Is it that there's an expectation that the currency would further, you know, all these things are really burning questions. So that's why every stakeholder will definitely air their views and voices. And the banks as well will also do the same and also engage the authorities to see how they can come out of this, um, the, the whole um, 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 tax policy that has been slammed on them. Okay, so do you see a reconsideration on the horizon? Maybe. Well, at this point, that it has already been passed, we it's just a wait and see approach we take right now. 
Okay, so Mukhtar, let me come to you. The first announcement was made on Wednesday, July 17. At that time, it was 50%. And since then, we have seen you know, the movement of the index, that's the banking index in the stock market. Uh, what do you make of it? Troubling, concerning, or not? Well, before I answer that question, I just want to add to what uh, my colleague uh, have said. Who will speak for the bank? So, uh, yes, uh, the banks can speak for themselves. Um, they should also know that the banks are, do not belong to an individual. They have shareholders. And so the shareholders also won't have to speak because that money does not belong to the bank. It belongs to the shareholders. And that is one. Then secondly, I think the financial regulatory institution, the Chartered Institute of Bankers, have spoken today. And um, other um, key players in that sector are also um, saying their mind out what effect it will be. Now to your question about um, affecting the index. Of course, um, what do you expect? Uh, the, the most liquid sector of the Nigerian market is the financial sector. And then when you talk about the financial sector, you talk about the banking sector. When you see policies of a sort, like well, what my colleague have just said, you you are you as an investor begin to be a little bit apprehensive. Because if you see a policy that was supposed to just be a one-off thing that was now being taken to 2025, and then you look at uh, what space will you go to at, at this time. So it creates panic into the system. Um, it does not attract investors because it's just like we wake up in the morning, we just look at, oh, what do I have to do now? Do I have to put pressure on? Who do I collect money from? That is um, that is not capitalism because what they are telling is say you want to, uh, you have to, the main reason is to share the wealth that are generated by this bank. And uh, that is more or less you are trying to go into socialism whereby you have to share everything. No. Uh, what I think uh, is happening is that the banks are looking for an easy way, I mean, the government is looking for an easy way, and also uh, maybe the bank sector is happen to be the scapegoat because people feel maybe they are looking at what uh, public opinion about the bank is in terms of the kind of profit that they are making. But they are forgotten that some of, like I said, some of these uh, uh, banks also companies that suffered from this um, uh, policy of um, uh, FX also are also affected because some of them have collected loans from the banks. So, as an investor, you shouldn't be surprised when you see the index coming down. And uh, it has a snowball effect because even the, the ones that are not uh, really in the financial sector also suffering from dragging that because their result also is not in impressive. So, um, as an investor, when you look at a space like that, you begin to reconsider your investment decision. Right. Well, Mukta, well, Mukta just spoke. Navila, let me come to you now. Uh, so far, we've seen the index lose 398 billion naira in market capitalization. Can this be attributed to just the windfall tax? I know, and what are investors and shareholders also saying? Is it just about the windfall tax or is there something else that's pushing this negative sentiment? So even prior to the windfall tax, on a year-to-date basis, the index was already down uh, that was prior to the announcement. All right, I guess uh, that's some connection issue right there. If you can hear me, Nabila, you can please take it up from there. Okay, uh, Mukta, let's have you. Uh, let's have your thoughts on this particular one. What was the question again? Okay, so I was asking her if this uh, loss that we have seen in the cap, that's the banking index cap, if the loss is attributable only to the windfall tax, or are there other factors that are pushing this negative sentiment on that particular index? Uh, I know, I don't think so. Um, it's not only the wind tax, uh, maybe the windfall tax uh, helped uh, bring it a little bit lower, I mean, higher than what we're thinking. Um, remember that the banks are coming to raise funds, and um, some of them... Uh, also, when investors look at um, some of the banks, how much they want to raise and the amount, and look at the price van by what is happening in the um, in the capital uh, market, the price in the capital market, the secondary market. Um, I mean, uh, people begin to, I mean, uh, in the primary market, and people begin to look at why should I uh, begin to think of buying those stocks now because they uh, they they feel that after the the right issues, these stocks may go lower than what they have sold during the right issues and also the fact that um, even the right issues price is higher than what you are seeing in in the in the in the price on the secondary market uh, in the primary market so i think investors are 
is trading off some of their equity and looking for a good entry point. And that's why you are seeing uh, what you are seeing in the market at this moment. A lot of investors are rethinking their investment. And then also some of them are looking at the fixed income space also. And that needs, that that that's a little bit stable than or just keeping the bank that you have so much of this fluctuation. So I think, um, yes, the, the windfall tax has a way, it has a, an effect on them. But also I think, um, uh, the, 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 the right issues or the public offer and the price of the, both the secondary and the primary market is also having an impact on what is happening in the stocks. Right, let's talk about some of the concerns and uh, what you make of them. This is coming from shareholders and investors. Now, first, investors believe that this tax will significantly impact the ability of banks to pay half-year dividends. Amen. Now, secondly, the imposition of the windfall tax is also likely to affect the overall valuations of banks. And they're also looking at the fact that this windfall tax requires banks to pay the taxes in cash, which presents another layer of difficulty, seeing that, I mean, we have around, banks have around 20 trillion naira tied with the CBN as CRR, based on the cash reserve ratio. And what are your thoughts on this, Nabila? So for the first uh, question, which is on with regards to paying dividend, these banks, uh, let's understand that really the FX is not something that, the FX gain is not something that is sustainable. They will still have to fall back on their, you know, core income uh, making streams, which is income fee and commission, uh, just to mention but a few. So what this simply means is that number one, they are still in their line of business and they are making money from that, given the high interest rate environment. Secondly, they are in the market to raise money. What other way would there be than to water investors' appetite with, you know, very attractive dividends? So I do not really see that having an impact on their H1 dividend. We are still, we have seen um, the likes of FCMB release their results, which was yeah, quite impressive and largely as a result of poor um, business, uh, poor business of lending and not necessarily because of any FX related gains. We expect the other banks as well to come out with their results that will be strong and would also expect that dividends, at least the interim dividends will be marked for trade. Now, if we move on to the valuation part of it, you're spot on with the fact that, uh, you know, paying of this tax, the windfall tax will in, imply higher tax paid, and this would definitely uh, reduce the, the, the PAT and translates to a lower return on average equity at the end of the year. So definitely it will have an impact on that, um, but that does not really deter them as well from paying dividend because they are still in the business of lending and they, they are making money from that front. Right. Uh, Mukhtar, can I have your thoughts on this? I think um, she hit the nail on the head. head. I, I would just add that again, like she, she, she well, may I just add to what she said, remember that um, this bank retail earnings is still very, very liquid. Uh, but if not that CBA wanted to raise um, uh, to bring in fresh capital, some of them, their return is enough to recapitalize. So the banks are very still very liquid. The worst that will happen is that maybe you won't see a growth in terms of dividend payout like what we saw um, last year, but we might just maintain the same status quo because now maintaining of the status quo might not even do to due to that the banks are not making profit or they won't pay higher. But when you have a regulators or you have a physical side that can come up with <laughs> anything of the day, you want to guide yourself against them. So I still still strongly believe that the banks will be able to pay dividends going forward. Uh, I don't knowing that uh, most of these um, win for tax when you look at uh, their they, they are, they are, they are contribution to their earning per share is not just it's not about 70 to 80 percent. And like she said, they still made income uh, outside the win for tax. And so I mean, they paid high dividend last year without using the win for tax. They will be able to pay those dividends this year, maybe the same amount or maybe considerably a little bit higher. My challenge is um, going forward, will they be able to sustain it? Uh, will they, uh, because you can come at the point of uh, watering investors' appetite, but it, like you said, the cost, the violation might go down because what it means is by the time you list some of these offer shares and the right share, they may have to to double their profit margin to be able to even sustain the dividend payout. But in terms of retail earning, like I said, the retail earning is still very, very strong. Right. And that's so they will be able to pay dividends. Okay. Now, Nabila, let me close with you on this. Do you think this is impacting the capital raising efforts of the banks? I mean, we have, today is the last day for Fidelity's, um, you know, rights issues slash uh, public offer. 
uh, we are still in the market, access still in the market, and all this news is not supportive really of the capital raising exercises of these banks. So um, as I earlier mentioned, timing really is something that is of, of crucial importance to the banks, given that they, are, they have a timeline to raise these monies before 2020, March 2026. So all these things are being factored in by investors. However, what I would like investors really to focus more on is the fact that these banks are into the business of lending. Whatever FX gains that they will they have booked previously or they would book because of any dislocation in the currency market uh, is not sustainable. What is sustainable is their core business, which is in the business of lending. So investors should really look out for those banks that are fundamentally strong in terms of their core business streams and, you know, take advantage, take positions despite this downtrend and um, invest in them. Before I let you go, do you think that the banks that started, you know, that came to the market earlier, uh, are sort of maybe they have an edge against those who would be coming in later to raise funds? Well, well, um, there's always that um, thought that uh, first come, first serve. Like, you know, the early bird catches the worm. And we did, we did see that with, we are seeing that rather with um, Fidelity because as I, there was a time they also mentioned that they would come up uh, they'll have another extraordinary meeting just to see how they can extend the, uh, the period of their race, which is largely because they are anticipating that it might be oversubscribed. So, yes, there is that perk that comes with the fact that you are first to enter the market. And it's uh, it just, and as we started to see, other banks will also follow suit. So, it just simply means that those that are in the market right now or intend to enter the market in the next few coming weeks would um, be able to take advantage of this situation than those that are coming much later. All right, thank you. Uh, Mokhtar, just before we close, let me get your closing thought on these final issues we just talked about. I, uh, I think now before you said um, he who comes first enjoy, but it seems like he who is coming last will not enjoy more because they, they know the pulse of the market. Um, most of them that came to the market did not realize there was going to be this uh, um, tax windfall and um, tax taxing on their windfall. So definitely investors went back and looking at the price in both um, the, the secondary line and the primary market, there's a wide difference. And so a lot of investors are not even planning to take their right. Um, maybe she's not aware, but I just got it from information if I came on air that um, um, Fidelity Bank have extended their 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 right and their public offer. Well, it could be due to if it if it is um, over subscription, they would they would definitely wanted to go. They would have wanted to go to the AGM, Mr. General AGM. Okay. But again, if you are extending it by this time, maybe it maybe it might be due to under subscription. So all right, I, uh, I think we'll just end it here. Part, we have to end things. it here. We have an advert we need to go for now. Thank you so much, Nabila Mohammed, Banking Sector Analyst, Chapel Hill Denham. Thank you for your time. Mukta Mohammed, CEO Asher Investment Limited, thank you also for your time. Thank you.